Hello, this is John with GEDMathLessons.com and what I want to do is put together a quick tutorial uh, video about charts and graphs with respect to the math portion of the GED exam and uh, this is, you know, I'm saying GED but if you're taking uh, another exam like the high set or or the task exam or any other type of basic exam um, you know, like an equivalency test, this is going to really help you out. So charts and graphs this question comes up a lot um, from a lot of students uh, in adult education, and they're like, you know, how do you know how do I manage these questions? And that and that in itself is a good question because there are definitely, you know, um, visual charts and graphs on many of the questions on these exams. So what I want to do is take a look at three basic uh, basic type of charts and graphs. The first one is going to be the bar graph. So you know, if you're familiar with Microsoft Excel, you might see different things like this. Now, I don't actually have any values in here yet because I don't want to, um, you know, uh, distract from you. Okay, this right here is a basic bar graph. Right now, you'll see, I'll, I'll put some values in here in a second. But what does it represent? Well, these bars, okay, okay, the higher they are, the more they are in value. All right, so there's a scale this way. All right, that we have to read, and at the same time, there's another scale this way, or there's something, another unit of measure. So I'm going to kind of make something up here, kind of get rid of this. Let's suppose this was tracking, maybe our our heating cost uh, throughout the year. So let's make this like November, December, January, February, March, and let's say this is, uh, let's say 60, 80. Um, let's say 110, uh, this is maybe 70, and this is 40. Okay, so real basic common uh, uh, type of graph that we see is this bar graph. Right? You actually see this probably in a lot of your billing statements and everything else. But some of the questions that you may encounter on a GED are going to give you, you know, they're going to give you a question that's going to require you to actually do something with these numbers. So one question I can ask you is what percent of my bill, okay, my, the total amount I spent, let's call this natural gas, from November to March, how much was January, okay, what percent of my total um, cost for natural gas from November to March was did January represent, okay, so really kind of real common type of question, so what you'd have to do is get a total 60 plus 80 plus 110 plus 70 plus 40, I would get that total all right, I'm just going to call that total. I'm not going to actually do the math. And then I'm going to take the amount of January, which is 110, okay? And here, when I actually plug this into my calculator, I would get a percent. Okay, I actually get a decimal, but then you just multiply that by 100 and you get a percent. So real basic type of percent questions are very common with these bar and chart graphs, okay? Real, real, um, you know, this is kind of really represents many of the questions that you would see. So I can come up with all kinds of different ways of asking questions. I could say, let's call this uh, the year 2014, and then here, let's say this was 2015. So I could say, how much did you spend uh, in the last two months of 2014 percentage-wise versus, you know, uh, the first three months of 2015? So that, I mean, that sounds like a wordy question, but all they're asking you to do is to add these two up, right? So that's 2014 amount. You just add those two up and then divide it by how much you spent in 2015. So there, there's another type of question they can ask you, but pretty much this is this is going to be pretty much a, um, kind of the, the, the typical type of question format when it comes to not only a bar graph, but all the other different type of uh, graphs and charts we're going to look at. So the next one would be like a line graph, all right? Now, once again, I don't even have any, uh, I don't have values here, but let me kind of throw some in. Let's call this three years. Uh, let me see here. Let's say six, nine. You'll see what I'm doing here in a second. Um, let's call this 12, 15, and 18 years. Okay. And if you notice, here in my bar graph, I was kind of, uh, the bottom scale was representing time. Now, it doesn't always have to be time, but time is very common. So here I have months, right? Kind of uh, representing um, these bars represent each individual months. 
here, this one represents years. So now what am I doing here? Let's say this is a person, a, uh, let's call this um, uh, male, and say his name is Sam, and maybe this is tracking his height, okay, through the years. So let's say this is two, four, six, um, yeah, that's good enough, right? Say so two, four, six, and these are feet, all right? So what I can do in this line graph is track. So let's say three years old, he was two feet tall, six, he was, by six, he was um, maybe, uh, let me see here, maybe somewhere three feet, nine by nine, he was maybe like right here, a little bit higher than four, 12, he didn't really grow that much more, 15, he kind of sprouted up to six feet, and then 18, maybe he went from like six and a half. All right, so this would be a line graph, all right? And then we just kind of connect the dots, kind of shows a pattern of his growth through the years. Okay, so we, as we're kind of reading this, you can kind of like see what's going on, and this is the other scale feet. And once again, I can ask all kinds of questions. I could say, how, to, um, how much did Sam grow um, uh, from six years old to 12 years old? You know how t how um how much more did he grow right so here i would have to look at the six year old six year old scale and i go over here and I say oh, that looks like three feet he was three feet when he was six and at 12 he was let's say five feet okay so you see i'm reading the scale let's call this five let's call this three so clearly right there the difference is two feet Okay, so another kind of typical question. They, a lot, oftentimes with these um, graphs, they just they're almost testing your ability just to read the graph. Okay, so if they ask you to read the graph, get a piece of information, you might have to add up some totals or subtract some things or find some percentages. But once again, with the bar graph, uh, this, the concepts are very, basically the same. Okay, I could take the same information in a bar graph and represent it in a line graph. And for those of you out there who work with Microsoft Excel, for example, and and seen, you know, data kind of uh, put in, in column row form, you know, you can kind of represent it in different ways. All right, so but this is a basic, uh, another basic type of graph, the line graph. All right, let's take a look at our last one here, and this is the pie chart. Okay, so like I said, uh, I can throw anything in here. I can say, well. Maybe this represents uh, the total population of um, uh, people in our town, okay? So let's say our town, um, I'll just kind of make something up. Let's say these are people from, say, 60 to 80 years plus, okay, old. And maybe these folks here are the folks that are from, let's say, 30 to um, 50. And then let's say I only got a, a few uh, folks that are from 51 to 59, and then the rest are like, let's say, you know, one year old to 29. Okay, so this can be kind of a breakdown of uh, uh, the amount of people um, in a particular town by age. But uh, more importantly here, I can look at this and actually give actual values okay so here here and here this isn't helping us as much as let's say um, uh, the number of people so like here this is a pretty good amount let's call this um, I mean this is more almost half of the circle the 60 through 80 so if we're looking at that let's uh, let's call that a hundred so if that's a hundred what value do you think this would be you can just kind of eyeball it does it look like it would be less than a hundred yeah, it would be less, right? Maybe like, say, 70, okay? And then here, this could be maybe like 20 people. And then right in here, let's say this would be like, let's say 40. Now, clearly these numbers are kind of off, you know, or, you know, this might be like 100,000. Know, if we're talking about a town or a city, you know, numbers are going to be uh, quite, you know, quite much, uh, quite a lot bigger. But the scale, the, the relative proportions is not going to change. But once again, I can ask you, say, well, how many out of the entire population of this town, okay, how many, um, uh, uh, the oldest out of the, uh, the oldest people, okay, which would be our 60 uh, uh, through 80 plus group, 
you know, compare that. How many of those folks do we have um, in terms of percentage-wise in the total population? So I would actually have to find out what the total population was. So that'd be 70, I mean, 100 plus 70 plus 20 plus 40. That would give me my total, right? And then here, my oldest population would actually be 100. So whatever my actual total was, I would go ahead and once again divide and I'm going to get a percentage. Okay, so here, all of these, when you add these up, you know, they give you your total, and then I can take any individual slice here and then kind of as, uh, answer a question. And then might, I can actually maybe add up two of these slices if the question wants me to. But the, the thing here is this. I don't want you to get kind of um, confused, overly confused with these charts and graphs on a GED exam. What they're asking you to do is read the graphical information pick out the information you need. You might have to do, and I mean, you may have to do uh, one or two steps to actually get the information you need. You might have to, and very likely will, have to add up some totals and then find some percentages or some uh, subtract some, uh, some things. But the actual math, you know, shouldn't be too difficult. You're either going to be adding, subtracting, or finding some basic percents. But once again, we have the pie chart. We have the line graph, okay, and the bar graph. This is probably going to cover uh, the bulk of what you'll see. But anyways, um, hopefully you found this, uh, this uh, quick uh, tutorial uh, useful. If you want to learn uh, more, please come on over to gedmathlessons.com. It's my free uh, online math course, video math course. Very, very um, comprehensive. And uh, I'm actually ex excited to say um, since the time of this video, I've been running for about two years, um, we've had so many people uh, use this uh, course and pass with flying color. And these are folks um, that have, you know, really struggle with math. And it just goes to show that, hey, look, you know, when you get yourself into the right course, whether it's mine or another course, you can actually learn math. Okay, but you have to be committed to it and you need the right, you need the right help. Okay, and that's where a good teacher will come in. So please, I invite you to come, uh, come on over to gedmathlessons.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.